Hey guys, welcome back. You might see that I'm cheesing a little more than normal today, even though I'm really out of energy from a very long day. I have been waiting for this moment for probably, let's see, seven years. I'm actually coming up on my seven year anniversary in the hobby. And shortly after I got into the hobby, one of the first mainline locomotives that was any different or unique was the 844 I saw in person. And after seeing that locomotive with my cousin in Stockton, California in 2009, I noticed these massive water tenders and this massive flag, U.S. flag along the side. And I thought, wow, that's awesome. I want to model that. So I ran home and I ordered the 844 and I ordered a whole bunch of cars to go with it. I was going to make the best 844 set that anybody ever had. And bam, I hit a wall when I found out that nobody made the water tenders. Uh, Overland Models had made an older version, but these new retooled, redone water tenders, Jim Adams and Joe Jordan, nobody had made. And I remember uh, just recently, actually, I looked in my email and I found emails asking my cousin all the way back, just weeks after I got in the hobby, why isn't anybody making these water tenders? Well, finally the day has come and somebody... Somebody new to the market has made these water tenders. This is Scaletrains.com. This is going to be a review of the Union Pacific Auxiliary Water Tenders. These are long-awaited, um, great item that has been a huge hole in the hobby for any UP steam modeler doing 844, 3985, and now 4014, wanting to do a steam excursion. With Union Pacific, it's finally here. MSRP $119.99, and that's for two cars, DCC equipped with directional lighting. So under DCC address three, you can look at the lighting and change the directions of the lighting or turn it off. So DCC decoded in here with two items, uh, two cars, highly detailed, um, is a pretty good deal at $119.99, because what you're looking at is basically 60 bucks a car. So for any of you math geniuses out there, you can check well, out the review of these, see what you think. So let's get started with this review right now. Beautiful red box here and Union Pacific Railroad shield on the front, scale trains logo, little kind of drawing of the initial plans or something. Got your label right there and you got some details on the back. It really talks about the history, talks about scale trains. If you want to pause and read more, then go ahead. Um, but in the essence of time, we're going to go ahead and open this up. This is of the rivet counter line. As I've told you guys before, scale trains being new to the market, I'll repeat this one more time. You've got museum quality, which is high, high quality stuff. They'll do um, certain items in locomotives. You've got rivet counter, which is the next step down. And you've got uh, all detail, still a lot of detail in rivet counter. It's highly detailed. You have operator for some rolling stock. Um, and you're going to, which is less detail, you add your end decals, etc. And you're also going to have kit classics where you put stuff together uh, on your own, like uh, the old blue box kits or different kits of different types. So this is only available in rivet counter. So we're unboxing. This is not the first time we're unboxing it, because to be honest, as soon as I got these things in, I ran the wheels off them. But this is the manual. Talks about the water tenders. Talks about all of the parts on the water tenders, etc. Gives you a nice label of parts um, and what everything is. So maybe I can sound smart when I point stuff out to you guys. And then on the back end here, a uh, list of parts. If anything goes wrong, you got your parts list and you can order parts. You got a warranty policy from Scale Trains. Uh, one year date of purpose, uh, purpose, one year date of purchase. The warranty period can be increased to two years by registering your product online. So that's very um, unique to the industry as well. So there you have that. Now let's get to the stars of the show. 
what I've been waiting on so long. So I will contain my excitement and I will give you a fair and very um, independent review. As you can see, I unboxed it so already, so the little plastic is out. Um, so we'll be scrutinizing anything. Being a huge UP fan, I'll be looking closer than usual at these actually, um, because it's important um, that these things are done great, you know, right, um, done well, things work out well. So first I'm going to remove this. There's no need to unbox the second one in front of you. You get the point of how it's boxed. you got soft plastic surrounded by hard plastic. Kind of uh, very normal in the industry. But we're going to take a closer look at detail of these tenders starting next. We are up close and personal with this thing and we are going to take a look at the detail. But before we just even consider moving along, just take a look at how beautiful that flag is. It's a three-dimensional flag just like on the real thing. They didn't cop out and print it out on the side. It is actually a placard that is attached. Just really nice appearance. You see all that rivet detail, weld lines along the edges there. But let's start from the front. So one thing that really sticks out is the water sight glass here. Uh, it shows you the level of water. You've got the light, which is an LED headlight here, or just accessory light, whatever you want to call it. Um, you've got the ladders that run on each side, brake wheel, MU hoses with silver tipped ends, coupler cut lever that's uh looks like it is in place, it does not move. You've got the scale trains couplers here. You have UPP 809, which is the Jim Adams tender, obviously, on the side. And you have handrails along the top. We're going to move this puppy to the side here. On the side view, what really sticks out is obviously these equipment boxes. These are tender deck equipment boxes up top. You've got the tender decked oval water fill hatches here and here. You've got the tender deck water fill pipes here. They curve in on each other. And then this little guy here is a tender deck air vent. So those are the pieces up top, obviously. That's what all those are. You've got the handrails that run left and right just for the safety of the crew. But looking along the sides, you've got the American flag placard. Um, obviously, Jim Adams under here. Uh, nicely done control valve. It kind of splits or goes right next to Jim the M and Jim and splits Jim and Adams up here. Air reservoir underbody detail here we'll take a look at. You've got the trucks, three wheel trucks, the bearings spin, the, the wheel bearings spin as you move along. See the underside detail with the air reservoir. Metal wheels. You've got chain detail in plastic that's molded here but also they have available for sale, or will have available for sale, uh, separate truck chains that attach from here to here. The corners there, as you see, um, where those might attach. So overall, uh, just really great looking car. They didn't spare any detail. Um, you can even see the weld lines and how those are outlined, just like the real tenders. Now, these flag holders here are press fit. So you have to be very careful. Um, they can adjust on you. So just keep an eye on that. Let's go ahead and swing around to the back side here. You got tank access cover here. You've got the basically the electrical cords that would run up to the light molded into the body. You've got another sight glass here. Water sight glass. And you've got the ladders that run up and down, MU hoses again, air hoses, scale trans coupler that's nicely painted, ladders, crew access ladders there. Just a beautiful, beautiful car. So they really knocked it out of the park in my opinion. I think they did a great job on the car. And you can even see just all the piping detail, all this underbody detail along the side here. Just really great. Conduit pipe here. Just 
I don't know, it's just amazing that they went into that much detail. I would have been happy waiting that long um, just for something that resembled the tenders in the correct shape. And here you have a great representation that Scale Trains um, took the time to thoroughly research and actually produce a great tender. Um, you got the brake wheel stand here with the brake wheel right there on the end. Just beautiful. I, I, uh, it brings a tear to my eye, it really does. It's something I've waited for so long and then to have a company execute it to the very best they can. I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm trying to find anything wrong with these in terms of execution or mistakes and I really can't. I think they did an outstanding, outstanding job. Here's a quick look at Joe Jordan. More of the same. I won't go and spout off all the same details because that's what you have is the same details as the Jim Adams uh, minus the flag placard pretty much. I don't know if there's any variances between the two. You see the other side. Union Pacific, Joe Jordan on the side. So same detail, same type of tender. I won't waste any more of your time on that. Alright, as you can see probably by the car that's lighted in the background, the theater car, I have power on the track. Uh, address is set at 3. I'm going to go ahead and hit 0. There you see the actual very nice golden yellow LED light. That looks very prototypical. It's nicely done. Then I'm going to go ahead and change directions. And I can see the reflection of it already. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the other side here. Pick this up off the tripod. My amateur YouTube way of life here. And there's the other side lighted. And all I did was switch directions. And then for folks that don't like the idea of the lights, no big deal. The good thing is that you can actually turn the lights off. So I will switch back to the front here without switching to the rear and just hit F0. Bam, light off, done. DCC control, both of these tenders. Change addresses, do what you do to control um, these independently if you wish. But there you have it. Also friendly on DC for operation as well, so no big deal there. That wraps up pretty much all the details of these tenders. Let's finish with some final thoughts. Well guys, that wraps up the review of the ScaleTrains.com Auxiliary Water Tenders, Union Pacific uh, Steam Auxiliary Water Tenders. Pretty awesome set. Now, I had to actually calm myself down, think to myself, okay, don't get out of hand, don't go crazy. Calm yourself down, don't do a disservice to your viewers, actually look at this and see if there's any problem. So I slowed myself down, slowed my roll if you will, and really looked at the models. And the only thing I could find, one nitpick, is that the press fit flag holders, you want to make sure that those don't pop out on you or bend up or down. That is it. That is the only thing I could find, and that would probably be if you're handling them incorrectly, because I looked at the packaging and there's space around all of them that there's no packaging rubbing on them. So that is just nitpicky to the 10th degree. Other than that, I can't find anything to be upset about. Now don't get me wrong, I've been waiting on these water tenders so long that I'd have been happy with a faint representation just in the shape of them, but to do a service to the viewers, I really took a look with a magnifying glass, which is kind of funny because Scale Trains kind of uses a magnifying glass in their advertising, but I really looked at the detail. Um, the print, everything is beautiful. Detail is awesome. So I couldn't be happier with the product. Price, $119.99 is just also amazing because $60 a piece. If you look at the manufacturers out there that have released tenders before with far less detail, some of not even DCC equipped or DCC compatible to have directional lighting or anything, and you, they're almost the same price or more. So great price, great product. I really have nothing to say other than that nitpick, uh, nitpick about it. So um, pretty awesome. Now one thing I will suggest to you, just me to you as a courtesy, um, something that I've experienced myself is this UP stuff, UP Steam stuff, tends to fly off the shelves um, once it's released and then the next thing you know they're all gone and there's you know people marking them up on online on Facebook forums and Craigslist and eBay. Um, I have another set even though this set um, came in before release, I have a set that is pre-ordered through scaletrains.com and I suggest that you pre-order your set. Don't wait till release to order it because I don't know how fast it's going to disappear. Um, this is not like a 
you know, a home shopping network ploy to you guys. This is what I've personally dealt with in the past. Um, a lot of brass pieces, some steam engines, some plastic pieces related to UP Steam fly off the shelves and then the prices are ridiculous. Go look on eBay right now at Overland Brass selling for double and triple MSRPs on those items because everybody's trying to get them because they were so unique. One manufacturer, one type of auxiliary tender, these will too be unique because I don't think a manufacturer other than scale trains will dive into this. So you are going to want to pre-order those is my suggestion. Now if you want to wait till they come out, they're going to come out very soon, that's up to you too. But scaletrains.com is where you would order them. You can go through their dealer network. Lots of dealers out there are not going to pick one. Um, so that's a scale trains dealer you just find one you want or go through scale trains.com direct to pre-order and the cool thing is when you pre-order through them they don't charge you anything you just click the button that says like charge me later or something there's a way to uh, they actually prefer that you don't pay then so you can hold that spot hold that model that's all i got for you guys but one last thing before you go check out some awesome run buys of these tenders coming up at the end of this video. We've got the bridge scene with the regular sounds from the models and then to top that off I've got a scene from the Cheyenne Frontiers Days Train 2011 uh, sounds that were dubbed into my model scene here by my uh, car shop. So I went on that train in 2011 you can look up my trip actually in the video archives but it kind of brings it back full circle uh, when I'm able to take a nice model representation of this and uh, tw over 20 cars, I think 24 or 25 cars, and sound dub in the actual time I rode the train and have it right here on my layout. So it's pretty cool. I think I did fairly good with the sound dubbing. I'm new to it, um, but please enjoy that, and I will leave you with that. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care. <laughs>